Hello, in this presentation we will work a worksheet together which will record journal entries similar to those we have recorded in the past, journal entries related to cash. So we will record the journal entry process a bit faster but we are adding a new component this time. That component being that we will post these journal entries rather than to a, a worksheet as we did in the past to a general ledger. So we're going to post these journal entries that we will record here now to this new item over here, the general ledger. This being the more traditional way of posting the transactions and a bit longer of a way. Obviously, this worksheet's going to be a bit uh, longer. We're going to have to maneuver around this worksheet a bit, which will help us with both understanding Excel and the uh, larger worksheets. Note, as we go, this will not be too complicated as we go hopefully if we take it one step by step but note just the complexity of this worksheet would intimidate most people so that's just the nature of spreadsheets even though what we do from point to point typically is not too difficult we're just going to be using addition and subtraction most people are just scared of the of the worksheet itself that's good because it kind of provides us with some opportunities if we're we can understand how these things are put together then uh, we have a bit of a an, an edge in that particular area so that's what we're going to work on here we're going to record the journal entry here we're going to post them to the general ledger note that we have our trial balance in order of assets liabilities equity income and expense then the general ledger will be in the same order meaning we have asset uh, gl accounts liability gl accounts in orange and then the capital then revenue and expenses the gl accounts will include the account name matching the trial balance and it will include a debit and credit as well as a running balance which will populate as we go therefore all we want to do is enter data into the blue areas of this worksheet i'm going to maneuver around this worksheet mainly using this item down here going back and forth and we will also manipulate the size from time to time using this item down here I'd like to get used to that and see if we can all you know get used to working with those functions so let's go down to the first transaction which says Owner A deposits cash into the business checking account, 130,000. Asking our questions a bit faster than we have in the past, is cash affected? We're gonna say yes, cash is affected. Cash went into the business. Cash has a normal debit balance. We need to make it go up. Therefore, we're gonna do the same thing to it as its normal balance, which is a credit, which is a debit. So we're gonna debit this item. I'm going to go ahead and copy cash in cell E5, right click, copy. I'm going to put that in cell B5, right click, and I'm going to paste it to 1, 2, 3, just the values, not pasting normal because I don't want to make it green. We're going to paste it values only 1, 2, 3. We could just type it in there, of course, but I'm going to put uh, copy and paste. 130,000 in cell C5. I'm not going to put any, cre any uh, commas or anything like that. When we select enter, it will then populate for us. We then know that we are going to credit something. I'm going to use a formula to put the credit in there. I do need to put a negative credit in there. So either type in negative 130,000 or put the negative and then point to the cell. Excel will then take the 130,000, multiply it times negative one to get a negative 130,000. Then we just need to know what this account is. Now remember, it's the owner that put this 130,000 into the business. Therefore, we're really going to look for that owner capital or equity account, which is the owner capital in this case. So capital is here. That will then be the other account. I'm going to right click and copy that. I'm going to put that in cell B6, right click and paste one, two, three. Then I'm going to, we're going to double click before the O and, and indent three times and enter. So again, you could use the home, like if you wanted to indent without having to click the spacebar three times, you could click here and go to the home tab, alignment and increase indent. And that would do the same thing. Uh, sometimes when the cells are locked, however, that uh, that doesn't work. So you have to just use the spacebar. All right, then we're gonna post this. Remember that this whole worksheet right here, this is sometimes referred to as uh, the general journal. That's just like the piece of paper we put the journal entries on. This is the journal entry. The process of recording journal entry, the act of what we just did, recording this journal entry, is journalizing the journal entry. So these terms could pop up in multiple choice questions sometimes. And now we're gonna do the process of posting. This is the process of posting the journal entry to the general ledger. So this is the process of posting. So we're gonna start with cash. Cash is the first account on the trial balance. 
Therefore, also the first account on the general ledger, the GL. The cash account has a debit and credit side to it. We will be on the debit side first because we're recording the debit over here to the debit over here. We will be using formulas and I highly, highly recommend using formulas because it helps us to tie everything together. If there are problems, formulas help them solve the problems. So use formulas. <laughs> so I'm going to say equals for the formula and I'm going to just point to this 130,000. When we select enter, it will then populate this cell to 130,000. And this will then be populated here as well in cash as 130,000. So there we have it, 130, 130. We're out of balance by 130, meaning we have a debit and we have no other credit to cancel it out. That other credit, of course, being the capital account. Now the capital account is down here on the trial balance. It's gonna be in the same order over here. Assets, then liabilities, then equity. So equity is right there. I'm gonna make this a bit smaller by using this icon. I'm at 130% of normal size. If I click this, this, this down arrow, or if I hold down shift and scroll down, it will take this size down to 120 in this case. That might be enough. I'm gonna scroll up just a bit so we can see that. So now I can see this all in one space so we can see the entire worksheet here. And so I'm gonna go over here to cell O. 20. So I'm in the owner capital, which has a debit and credit. We want to be on the credit side because we are on the credit side over here. So we are in cell O20. Then we're going to use the same formula. I'm just going to say equals and point to that credit. So I'm going to say equals. Then I'm going to take my cursor and point to that credit right there. And that means it's just going to pull it over. This is going to populate up to 130,000. It will populate over here as well alt automatically we will then be back in balance, no effect on net income. So enter, so it's populated over here. It populated over here. We're back in balance, meaning the cash uh, of a debit equals the uh, what is owed to the owner and capital count of a credit. So debits and credits are equal, meaning debits minus the credits equal zero. And uh, we have no effect on net income. So that's gonna be the first transaction. Now note that we are recording this entire thing as we go, meaning I'm recording this journal entry, then posting it, and then we're seeing what happens to the trial balance and whether or not we are in balance at the same time. When you do a lot of book problems, especially because you generally have to do it by hand or sometimes use some kind of software, but they often will make you uh, do the entire journal entries, then post all journal entries, like all A through F in this case, to the general ledger, and then post all the GL accounts to the trial balance. Uh, that that's not a bad way of doing it. it could be faster in some cases but the problem is if you're out of balance at the end you won't know where you're out of balance at and you kind of have to start the whole thing over a lot of times therefore I recommend using Excel because you can kind of see what's happening if you do it by hand you kind of have to do that otherwise you'd have to erase basically these numbers each time and re-input those numbers uh, which might be a useful exercise to do I would almost recommend doing that uh, but I do recommend trying to put together some system such as this so that we can check our balance after every transaction so that we don't basically have to start all over again if there is a problem. So anytime you can set up the system in that way, I would look for that. It happens a lot in accounting where you're going to, things will be going great throughout the month until you try to reconcile something at the end of the month. You don't want to wait till the end of the month to reconcile something that you know is going to cause you a problem. You want to make a system so you can kind of do it as you go. Any type of longer problem, I would look to do it something like this, and that'll help you work through it. All right, we're going to do the second one here. It says, B, receive cash from client for work done. So we're going to say, is cash affected? We're going to say, yes, we received cash. Cash has a debit balance. We're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case would be another debit. So I'm going to copy cash in cell E5 by right-clicking copy going to paste that in B8 by right clicking, pasting not the normal paste, but pasting one, two, three values only. We're going to put the amount then, that amount being 13,000. We're then going to credit something for 13,000. So we debited cash. We're going to credit something by saying negative of that number and enter. Now we just need to know the account that will be credited and of course in this case we received cash from client for work done 
Therefore, the, receipt, the reason we are getting cash is because we did the work at the same point in time. When doing work, we earn revenue. So we will copy this revenue account and paste it here in cell B9. I'm gonna right click in cell B9 and paste it one, two, three. Then I'm gonna double click or we're gonna double click right before the R and indent three times, one, two, three on the space bar and enter. Remember that we credited this account, this revenue, one, because we knew we had to due to the fact that we debited the cash account. But if we think through it, we know that revenue is a credit balance, normal balance account, and that it only goes up in the credit direction. Clients or customers only pay us. We don't typically pay clients or customers. Therefore, we increase it by doing the same thing to it as its normal balance, which is a credit. We'll then post this out. This is the journal entry that we just processed of journalizing the journal entry. Now we will go through the process of posting the journal entry to the general ledger. We're gonna post this first part first, cash. There's cash here, here it is on the trial balance. Here it is on the general ledger, the first account. We're just gonna skip a line. Now, notice that oftentimes we'll have uh, the dates here on another column. I've eliminated the dates just so we have less data. So note that it's always gonna be in order by transaction, by the number of transactions that uh, we're gonna have. So we're always gonna basically skip another line whether it be a debit or credit typically and have a new transaction on a new line. Now note that some problems in some textbooks may try to save space by actually putting you know, credits over here like right next to the debit, but typically we would like to have a new line for each transaction within uh, the account, whether they be debits or credits. So I'm gonna be here in J10 and we're gonna say that equals and just point to this 13. Again, you could type in 13, but it's far better to use the formulas because if there's a problem, you will be much better off. When we hit enter, it's gonna take that 130,000. It's gonna increase it in the debit direction to 143,000. That 143 now also being shown on the trial balance, putting us out of balance by 13. The debits being greater than the credits by the 13 until we post this second piece. The revenue account is down here, so it's gonna be in the same order, assets, liabilities, uh, reven <laughs> equity, and then revenue. Same order here, so revenue is gonna be down here. I'm gonna to try to make the screen a bit smaller again, so I'm gonna hit this negative and make it a bit smaller so now I can see this cell and this cell at the same time. So I'm down here in the revenue account. It's a credit over here, therefore it's gonna be a credit over here, so I'm in the credit column. We are way down in 025. So 025, I'm gonna say that equals, and then take the mouse and point to that 13,000 credit. And when we select enter, this will go up to 13,000. It will also populate over here in the revenue account. It'll put us back in balance and net income will go up in the credit direction. So there we have this. This is being pulled over here. That's gonna make us in balance, meaning the debits equal the credits. Revenue is now revenue minus expenses, means that we have a credit balance net income then of 13,000. Remember that this is not a loss. I'm gonna make this a bit larger. I'm gonna go back over here. I'm gonna make this 130, scroll back to the left. So this does not mean that we have a loss. It means that we have a credit balance, meaning the credits of revenue beat the debits of expenses by 13,000. That is our current revenue. See what happens in C, we have paid cash to employees $780. Is cash affected? Yes, it is because we paid something and therefore cash is going down. Cash has a normal debit balance. We are gonna make it to go down by doing the opposite thing to it, which in this case is a credit. Gonna copy cash, gonna put that on the bottom. So there's C, I'm gonna put it underneath the C. Right click and paste one, two, three. The amount will be 780. So we are over here in D12. We're gonna put negative 780. Then we're gonna put something on, we're gonna put the debit on top. We could just type in 780. I'm gonna use a formula by saying negative of that cell. Then we just need to put the account up here in the top of this transaction. We paid for uh, employees. 
Therefore, we're gonna look through these accounts and we see an account called wages expense. So that looks like the account. I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna put that on top in B11, right click, paste, one, two, three. Then we're gonna double click in front of the C and indent three times and enter. Now we debited the wages expense because we credited cash and needed an equal number of debits and credits, but we also know that the expenses are debit balance, normal balance accounts, and they only go up. Therefore, we're gonna increase the expense with a debit. Now we're gonna post this. Now I'm gonna post the expense first, and the expense is way down here. So we've got assets, liabilities, revenue, and then expenses. It's gonna be in the same order when we post to the general ledger. So it's gonna be way over here on this side. So here are the expenses. Therefore, I'm gonna make the screen a bit smaller and see if we can see more of these two pieces at the same time. So I'm gonna say, make it a bit smaller like that. I'm gonna scroll over a little bit. So now we can see uh, this account here is gonna be posted all the way over here to the utilities. We're gonna post it in the debit column. So the debit column is way over here in R15. So I'm in R15. You could type it in there, but I'd recommend using the formulas because it'll make it much easier when you have problems. Equals, then go way over here and point to that 780. When we select enter, it's going to populate this to 780. It's gonna populate this to 780. It's gonna put us out of balance by 780. And it's gonna bring net income down by 780. Enter. So there we have that. The running balance is at 780. I'm gonna make this a bit larger again now, back up to 130. We see that uh, we're out of balance by 780. Net income is now 13,000 minus 780 or 12,220, the credits of revenue beating the debits of expenses by that 12,220. Then we're gonna post the cash, here's the cash. We're gonna post that to a new row. Notice that cash is affected a lot more than any other transaction, it always will be. You'll get a good idea of what's happening to cash first, which can clearly be seen by looking at the general ledger for cash. So we're on the credit side this time. So it's a credit, we're on the credit side, we're on a new row. I'm not gonna put the credit up here, although you may have some textbooks which do that to save time. Typically not a good format though, because we want you know each new date, trend. we wanted an order by date. And in order to do that, we need a new row. So we're gonna say this equals this 780. That's gonna bring this uh, 143 down by 780, because that's a debit balance account and it's gonna populate that same number over here and put us back in balance. So there we have that, brings us from 143 down to 142, 220. We see that amount here as well, back in balance down here. Next transaction, transaction D. Says, received cash for work that will be done in the future. So we got cash for work that will be done in the future. Is cash affected? We're gonna say yes, because we received cash. Cash has a debit balance, therefore, we're gonna make it go up, or we're gonna make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case is another debit. So I'm gonna copy cash. We're gonna put that on top of our journal entry in B14, right click and paste one, two, three. The amount will then be 19.5. So I'm gonna put 19500, no commas or anything else. Enter, and it will, it will then format the cell for us. Then over here in D15, we're going to say negative of that number. It's going to take that number, multiply times negative 1 to give us the 19.5 there. Now we just need to know what account that should be. We're looking for received work that for work that will be done in the future. So we're getting money from the client, but we have not yet earned the money. We're going to earn it sometime in the future. Therefore, we cannot post it to the revenue as we would like to because we have not earned it under the revenue recognition principle and we'll have to post it to the liability uh, unearned revenue. So I'm gonna copy that, gonna paste it down here in B15, right click, paste, one, two, three, values only. Then we're gonna double click in front of the U, indent three times and enter. Now we already know that we're gonna credit this because we debited cash, but if we were to think about it on its own, we would say that unearned revenue is a liability account. Liabilities have a normal credit balance. The bad thing is going up in that we owe something in the future due to this transaction. We don't owe the money back necessarily, but we owe the work to be done 
in the future. Therefore, it's a liability until we do the work. So that's going to be our journal entry. We're going to post this. This is the journal entry that we just journalized into the general ledger, which we will now post to the general journal. Posting cash first. We've got the 19.5 here. Cash is our first account on the trial balance and therefore the first account on the general ledger. We're going to skip another line. We're going to put it on a new line, have its own line here in cell J12. J12 is going to equal going to point to this 19.5 this 142.220 will increase by the 19.5 to 161.720 which will also populate here on the trial balance put us out of balance by the 19.5 until we record the other side in this case to unearned revenue unearned revenue is down here on the trial balance same order on the general ledger assets and then liabilities Therefore, we are over here in cell 014, 014. So we're going to say that equals and then point to this 19.5. When we select enter, it's going to bring this up to 19.5 credit. And that same credit will populate over here in unearned revenue. So there we have that. We're back in balance as well. Uh, no effect on net income from that transaction note. Next one, we said paid cash for utilities. Once again, we're going to say is cash affected and we're going to say yes, keyword paid. So we're going to say cash has a debit balance. We need to make it go down because we paid something. Therefore, we're going to do the opposite thing to it as its normal balance, which in this case is a credit. So we're going to copy cash in E5. We're going to put that account underneath the E here in cell B18. Right click and paste one, two, three. The amount will then be 975. So I'm going to put that over here in D18. It's going to be a negative 975 and enter. So there's the credit. We got that right. 975, correct. Then we're going to put the debit up above on top in C17. That's going to be a negative of this number. Then we just need to put the account here. What's going to be the account? Once again, it's for paid for utilities. So if we look through our chart of accounts, we see, hmm, how about utilities expense? That looks like the right transaction. So that's going to be the one. Note here that an error was made here. We have an error here on the general ledger in that this 780 I posted to utilities expense when it should have been posted to wages expense. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and correct that. So let's take a look at that now. I'm going to scroll back over here. We're going to say it got posted to utilities expense here. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to post it to wages expense right here. So by I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so we can see more of the screen at one time. And it's going to go right here in R9 and that's going to equal that I'm going to point to the 780 and enter. So basically it was in the expense, but it was in the incorrect expense. I'm going to put it up in the correct expense. Now we can post the utilities expense, make this a bit larger again. So I'm going to reformat this cell back to blue. And then we need to debit the utilities expense here. I'm going to copy utilities expense, put that on top in B17, right click, paste one, two, three. We're going to double click before the C and indent one, two, three times. Then we're going to post this out. So we got the utilities expense now. This is the general journal, which is posted, uh, which is going to be posted now to the general ledger. Notice in the same order, we've got assets, liabilities, equity, income, and expense. We're way down here in the final account, utilities. I'm going to make this a bit smaller again and see if we can see this all in one page. So here's utilities way over here. Let's see if we can get the right account this time. So. We're posting this utilities to utilities way over here in the debit side, that cell being R15. So in R15, that equals this 975. Once we select enter, it will record that 975 here. It will then populate over here as well. Take us out of balance by 975 and enter. So there we go. Now we're out of balance by the 975. I'm going to make this a bit larger again back to 130 we see the utilities and then the cash so here's cash 
Cash is going to be on the next line. So here's Cash here. We want to be on the next line. We want to be on the credit side. Therefore, we are in cell K13. We're going to say that equals and point to the cash here. That's going to bring this balance down by 975. That balance will then be populated here as well, putting us back in balance here. So there we have that. Next final transaction, which we have paid cash for supplies. So once again, is cash affected? We're going to say yes, we paid cash. Cash has a debit balance. We need to make it go down. Therefore, we're going to do the opposite thing to it, which in this case will be a credit. So I'm going to copy cash and we're going to credit cash i'm going to put it down under the f right click pasting one two three and the amount will be 455 so that's in d21 negative 455 then i'm going to double click before the c and indent three times then we need a debit of something for 455 i'm going to represent negative of that number to flip the sign to record the debit now we just need to know what to debit. It's for supplies. We will then find supplies. There's supplies. Gonna copy that. Gonna put that on top in B20. Right click and paste one, two, three. Note that supplies is gonna be debited for a couple reasons. One, because we credited cash and therefore we have to debit something. And two, because supplies is an asset account. Assets have normal balances of debits. They need to go up because we bought more of them therefore we're going to do the same thing to it which in this case is another debit we are now going to post this out so there's supplies we're going to post it down here to j25 uh, note that supplies is the third account on the trial balance therefore the third account on the gl we are on the debit side on the general ledger and therefore on the debit side for the gl in cell j25 equals this 455 that will populate this to 455. It will populate up here to 455. Put us out of balance by 455. So there's that 455, 455, out of balance by 455. Now we're going to record the cash side, which is a credit. So here's the credit to cash. We're going to record that right there in the credit side in cell K14 equals this credit. That's going to bring this balance down by 455. That balance will then populate up here in the cash count on the trial balance. Put us back in balance here on the trial balance. And there we have that. So that's going to be the recording of these transactions uh, with the full general ledger. Again, note that we're recording these as we go uh, rather than doing all the journal entries and then recording the, the GL and then record in the trial balance. This is typically how software would kind of work, but not always how uh, book problems will work because book problems are typically more on a, on a doing it by hand basis. And in that format, uh, if we didn't have Excel to kind of populate these cells for us, then uh, it would be a lot of erasing to do this way. But if you can set it up this way, even if you have to do it a lot of erasing, it may save you time in the long run. It will save you time if you have Excel it may save you time even if you have to do a lot of erasing because uh, it'll, it'll show you when you run into errors. And I guarantee you, even if you have to do a lot of erasing, it'll give you a better understanding than doing all this and then posting all that here and then posting the ending balance all here and then being out of balance and getting frustrated and starting over again. So uh, keep that in mind as you go and we'll work the next one next time.